Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread. Today we have a special treat for you from Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, and I promise you, it's not low carb. Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread. Today we have a special guest from Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, Jason LaLima, and he's from Madonia Bakery. It's one of the last strongholds up in the Italian section of Arthur Avenue. Jason, welcome. How are you doing, Monsignor? How are How's you? Everything? Welcome. Very good. Thanks for being here. And first tell me, you were not born in the Bronx. You come from Brooklyn. Yes. Everything good comes from Brooklyn. Yes. Tell me a little bit about where you came from and... I grew up in Marine Park. Marine Park, okay. Uh, good Shepherd Parish? Good Shepherd Parish, okay. yes. Went to Good Shepherd all, right. all my life. All right. <laughs> and then uh, I, I had moved up the way for a while. I was in the baking business with my father, and I really didn't care for it too much. Did you go to then. school or you learned? Yeah, 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 yeah. Only about eight years ago. Okay. I went to cooking school because oh. I wanted to be a chef. Where'd you go? I went to... Uh, New York Culinary Academy. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. there's so many of them. You know, I went yeah. to one in Hyde Park, the Culinary Institute, in yeah. America, years ago. I wish years I could have went there. <laughs> 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 I went to this one, and uh, you know, I learned. I came out. I went to work for Del Posto. Okay, under sure. Mark Ladner. And yeah, that sure. Whole the crew steak and, place. Yeah, right, yeah. And then uh, I came back to Bonsoir Caterers and worked with our friend Jeff. Jeff, sure. I know yeah. we use them all the time. Jeff yes. is so wonderful to us. He works in many of the parishes throughout the diocese, oh, yeah. and he does the right thing. He does a good job. The food is great, and uh, everyone uses it. I've been to more churches working with Jeff than I have. Yes, <laughs> I know. Uh. So then I decided to get out of the cooking field because my father was like, come on up with us, right. me and my brother. So your father yeah. had the bakery? He had the bakery, yes. It's okay. 95 up there. Okay. He had come in you know, later on. Okay. So uh, I went up there and then it's just been trying to come up with new things using my culinary Background. skills that right. I, I learned in the restaurants and everything and trying to make the product better and try to come up with new and exciting things that makes everybody want to eat oh. more bread. Right. Now tell <laughs> me, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know about Arthur Avenue. I mean, the Italians know, but it's a, how many street, how many blocks are left? Oh, uh, you could actually say two. Two blocks left. Yeah. Now, one time it was, it was much more, larger. Yeah. You know, it's like Little Italy in, in downtown. Same right. thing, you know, it's it's gotten... It, and we're shrinking too. Small, yeah. And it's right around the corner from Our Lady of Mount Carmel yes. Church in yes, the Bronx. exactly. Yes. You know, it's interesting yes. that every Italian neighborhood, most of them have Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. There's a big devotion to Our Lady. Mm, so, yes. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know how true it is, but they say that when the people from Southern Italy left Italy, oh. the, one of the last churches that they saw was Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And wow. that's why a lot of them flock to neighborhoods that had Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So it's a couple of blocks, it's where? It's on Arthur Avenue and 187th Street, street to like Crescent Avenue is like the right. main strip. So now uh, this street, there's not only the bakeries, there's a, a couple of, there's a sausage store, right? Yes. There's a couple yeah, of restaurants. Uh, yeah, a lot of old school butchers. Right. You know, none of that package stuff, they're cutting, right. they're taking the lambs are hanging in the window, okay. tripe is in the window. Right. It just feels fresh like when I was a little girl, fresh mozzarella. All mozzarella. the different cheeses, yes. homemade pasta. The guy who makes the mozzarella, he sits in the back all day while you're in yeah. the store. Yeah. I mean, you literally get warm mozzarella when you walk out of there, it's amazing. There's nothing like fresh, yes. warm mozzarella where the butter, yeah. it's just the, the cream milk. is just coming out, yes. the milk. Oh. It's outrageous. It's unbelievable. Uh, the sausage play, everybody's doing artisan, you know, gabagol. The dried sausage, supasada, right. all those things up there. You got the Gobble cheese gold, guy. That, that's the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the smoked <laughs> yeah. ham, right. a little spice to it. I mean, we, right. you know, our audience, they don't know what gobble gold is. Yeah, that's true. They, <laughs> they didn't watch the ham and cheese and, uh, you know. <laughs> but I know, it, there's all these dishes that, you know. And there are only certain places. I mean, people still travel from all over the city to go up to yes. Arthur Avenue. Oh, yeah. You know, especially around the holidays, right? Oh, the holidays, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like... It's a very holiday, cheery place. Right. They got the signs up, they got music playing, yeah. and everybody just feels at yeah. home. It's like a winter wonderland. Right. And when you go there, there's a sense of history there. Oh, yeah. There's a sense of tradition there. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see those things still happening. Oh yeah. You know, there's a lot. certain pockets around, you know, the city. You know, you have Bensonhurst, you know, you have Little Italy downtown Manhattan. You know, there are certain areas that still have 
you know, uh, an Italian conclave there, and you can get all the specialties. Yes. So we're going to take a break now, and we're going to, when we come back, you're going to explain some of all these different breads and everything that you uh, make in your store. Great. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have with us Jason uh, Lalima from Madonia Bakery right. in <laughs> Arthur Avenue. Arthur Avenue. So tell me, mo basically cookies and bread. Now you have a lot yes. of bread here. <laughs> tell us some of these breads. Okay. So this is old world peasant bread, which would be the pan of the casa, and then a ciabatta, which is but a no bread. Bread of the house. Bread, bread of the house. Right? Yeah. Casa, okay. Bread of the house, correct. Then we had, uh, started developing more stuff. My father and my brother started coming up with more things. So we came up with a jalapeno bread. A little spicy. Jalapeno, That's a great. I love cheddar that cheddar and onions in it. That's a good thing. We have our brajoup bread. Okay. Which we put 10 pounds of, uh, 10 pounds of meat into like a gallon of it, so it's always a lot of meat. A lot of meat. So basically, you could cut this, put tomato or mozzarella, and you got a prosciutto sandwich. Okay. That's. Oh. <laughs> then we have our old world chicola bread, which is lard bread. Lard bread. Which yeah, we that's, use. Not too many places make lard bread anymore. No. Because that, first of all, everyone's so health conscious with the lard, and they, when they hear lard, they, they shy away from it. Yeah. It's, it's delicious. Yes, we love it. Yeah. And there's a lot of lard in there. Now, some <laughs> people, they interchange the lard bread and the prosciutto bread. They, they yeah. think it's that all lard bread is prosciutto. It's right. different. This is made with lard. This is made right. with prosciutto. But this yeah. is also made with meat, right? It, this has the fat rendered down until okay. it's like little crispies and then oh, okay. we mix it in. And from all that fat being in there, that's why it makes it like a pie crust almost. Yeah, wow. It has that, that nice. Uh, uh, then we have our pretzels that we make. A seven okay. grain pretzel and a regular pretzel. And this is a new one I'm working on. It's a pretzel with everything, but it's stuffed with super solder and mozzarella. Ooh. So it's like a nice little snack. Now you little... serve this warm or you serve it? You cold? serve it warm, you can eat it cold. I mean how heavy it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I started doing it with this. <laughs> I started doing trying different like types of pretzels to work on because my father, he went to Germany, learned the whole how to make pretzels. Right, right. So I started this, I got a habanero bacon and cheddar one. So people have been cursing me for that one because they don't realize how hot the habaneros are. Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> and then we have our world famous olive bread. Okay. Which there's... I'm not gonna like that one. What? I don't like olives. You don't like olives, no. really? So, okay. no offense, but I don't no, like olives. that's all right, okay. <laughs> that's all right. It grows on you, bud. <laughs> I'll make it up with the other bread. <laughs> hey, olive, olives are a holy thing. That's why I figured you might like no, the olives. No, no. No? I like olive oil. Okay. I like olive branches, but not okay. olive Well, these are nice Moroccan cured olives. Okay. Oil cured olives. A nice, nice tangy taste Okay. Of them. So, all right, and this is our garlic flour. This is one of our newest additions. I came up with the idea so you could pull them apart. Like people buy right. garlic bread, right. and you buy it out of the freezer section. And then you go home and heat it up. So I came up with a twist to make it that it's a warm sure. item that you can eat like that, and then take it home, even warm it up. and So they're, they're like individual olive, the, yeah. the um, garlic knots that yes. you get in the pizza. Exactly. Right? I try to take both concepts and okay. make it into one. Let's see what it looks like underneath. Okay. <laughs> Checking it out, you know. Then we have a dark chocolate bread. With chocolate. With chocolate chips, right? Mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot this, of chocolate in there. And this is the? White chocolate bread, which people love during the holidays. It's great to make toast, put ice cream in between it, make an oh, ice yeah. cream sandwich like that. A French toast? Yeah, French toast. Oh. Like, people love that for French toast. <laughs> and this here is the? Cranberry walnut. Cranberry walnut. Yeah, that one. On the turkey sandwich? Oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I sit home and I try and come up with new things. Wow. So, and that's uh, everything I have. And right now I have uh, I have some dough here. Now, do you use the same dough for all the breads and just add the different ingredients or uh, different doughs for different no, breads? No, it's pretty much different doughs. They're, some of them have sponges in them, starters in them. A sponge, some, like a regular sponge? Yeah, like, yeah, like a uh, yeah, day old <laughs> dough, or, yeah, exactly. What do you mean by sponge? Explain that. Uh, okay, it's, it's a starter. It's a very dry, dense, dough that you'll let sit overnight right. and ferment a little bit. Very, a little pinch of yeast. Okay. And then the next day you'll put it in with your water, you'll start mixing your flour and everything. And then you can add a little bit of yeast. It helps give the dough more okay. power and also gives it a taste. 
Because it's been sitting, it actually... Fermenting. Yeah, and, fermenting, okay. and it gives, gives the bread a nice flavor. Okay, so now, what's this dough? What are you going to make with this dough? And, uh, this we're going to make our garlic flour Okay. With. So we're going to scale little little pieces, we're going to roll them, and then we're going to put them in pans, set them up. Okay, so why don't we bring those pans over here. All right. And why don't you roll them, and I'll put them in. Okay. Let's start with a little... So, so we do eight to a pan. Now, do you um, weigh each one so they're all the same, or you know? Uh, usually, no, usually I put them, I have a divider. Right. So, okay. And I do them like that, but that Because the you one, know. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty much. Now, you're lefty? Or you're just you, for this? You know what? It doesn't, I'm right. righty, I'm lefty. Because okay. I roll with, with, I do hands. with both, both hands. Okay. The next one I'm going to try. Okay. I was never so great at baking, even though I loved it. Let me know if I did a good job. How's that? No. <laughs> Don't answer that. What am I doing uh, wrong? It it take, uh, that's better? You, you want to try and cup, oh, cup your it? hands around it a little bit. Okay. And then you'll get the shape. Okay. No difference between that. Cup it. Almost, you're getting it. Almost. I mean, how many of these have you made? Thousands, ten, hundreds of yeah, thousands. Yeah, a lot, a lot. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't stop. People just keep wanting oh, it. There you go. Get That'll later. work. And we got that one, and then we'll I need one. a little flour on my hands. One more in the middle. So I see. So, when you cup it, it makes right. the shape better. Yeah, because now oh, you look at that. the shape hey, in it. Not yeah. bad. <laughs> that would have been the third strike. I would have been out. <laughs> So that's the first one. Wow, look the at that, from that one and that one. Big difference, eh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Looks great. I think we can go with the business. I think so. I could use, I, look, I could use a holy hey. guy up there in the bakery. <laughs> I'm a quick Help learner. Help me out. I'm a quick we, learner. We have the sign on the wall, give us this day our daily bread. Really? Yes. Look at that, look at right. that. Not bad, huh, for a beginner? Oh, great. <laughs> Well, you forgot I probably would not know. <laughs> I'm a lot older than you. Okay, so now we have two pans here, then you would bake. Do you have to proof it, or? Oh, yeah, we'll proof it, but first we have to add more of our garlic butter to it. Okay. Because we'll have to go over the top with it. Now, what's on the bottom, garlic butter? That's the garlic butter, right. Okay. And then we'll put the one more. And put six and one in the middle. So that's one like, uh, right. so then we'll good take luck. This is butter. So you have garlic, uh, just butter? Yes, this is, uh, hmm. So we'll take that, and then I, what I do is... And that's on the bottom also, right? That's on the bottom, yeah. I brush them, so when I leave them in the refrigerator overnight, they won't get a skin because of the, the butter on top of it. It'll right. protect it. Okay. So we'll do that, and then we'll let them proof. And then you, proof, yeah. Proofing, just to explain that proofing is like, uh, it helps it to rise again before yeah. you bake it, right? Yeah, we want to get a, a little rise so they'll come out high when right. we bake them and uh, they'll look beautiful because if you don't get that proof, they're just going to be flat. Right, right. So that's something that we have to have happen. All right. bam, so that's, bam, bam, bam. that's perfect. There you go. <laughs> so we got that. Now okay. we'll let that sit to proof. We'll put this off to the side. So if you were putting them in the refrigerator overnight, you could and take them out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Proof I them. could put these in the refrigerator overnight. Or you could just overnight. proof them and, and cook them the same day. Exactly. I happen to find that sometimes I make them a day in advance ahead. Right. Because they taste better. Right. And they look better when they come out of the yeah. oven. I like when I bake them fresh, sometimes I'm just like, all right, I got to do them the day before. They just, the next and day that, they have this look yeah. to them. Yeah. That I can't even, like, rust, more rustic looking. Yeah. And Sometimes even with food, if you let it sit a couple of hours before you cook it, it gives a chance for all the flavors to, to, to marry, to yes. come together. Yes. Now, I see you have a little, uh, a little design here. What do you, you, you set them after so they... Basically what I do is, is, before I put them in the oven, before I Before proofing there. or... No, I do it after, but what we could do with this. Oh, that's how you I get cut, that. And I cut them like that. And I make a flour. Right. So I called it the garlic flour. Oh, nice. And it looks like a little... Let me try that. I think we got a job for you. Huh? I think we got a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking to make an extra couple of bucks. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> okay, so this is all ready to go, right? You're going to let that yeah. proof now? Yeah. We'll put this side over here for now. Okay. 
it, so. All right, then. We're gonna get you on to the pretzel segment. Have you ever made pretzels before? Um, many years ago in school. Okay. Been a long time. All right. I won't so tell you, you know how many what? years, but it's been a long time. There's one for you. All right. Let's see, let's That's see what you got. Time. Okay. <laughs> I remember, I went like this, and like this. It's gonna be a roll. <laughs> like this. No, do one. Let me watch. We'll take it, wow. we'll roll it out a little more. Try this one, let me see that again. All Hands right. quicker than the eye. All right. I don't want to get fancy because then the dog goes flying in the air. Wait a second. Right here, flip it over and grab. That's the thing. It's almost like Chinese jump rope. We used to play cats in the cradle. I flip it through the back. <laughs> I think it's a Chinese, a Chinese pretzel. The Chinese jump rope, <laughs> you know. Let's see, this way? Yep, and, and now. Then. Underneath or over? No, over, right there, and now pinch it. Oh, oh, right there. Oh, I was putting it through. I see. Hey, not bad. Okay. Hey, look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Come on. One more. Oh, one more. One Let's more. see what you got. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a stretch, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. That's okay, perfect. so these are ready to go. So we'll put these over here and let them proof. Now, when you proof it, you usually put it in a warm spot. It helps yeah, it to... Yeah, but these, actually, we've had the dough out for a while, so these can actually go as soon as I, I could put oh, them really? in a okay. solution and we could... Solution. Make... Water. What do you put? What's the solution? Oh, it's actually the old German way. We are using lye. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and I mean, that gives it that color, right? That gives it the color because it raises the pH to make it brown quicker and cook it in less time and okay. poison to everybody else. But once it gets cooked. You wanna do it? Yeah, I gotta get gloves on. You know, it's the weirdest thing. I've been on websites looking at it. How is this possible? But all it does, once it gets to a certain temperature, the poison's gone and it's just, it winds up as more alkaline to give it color. Okay. But yeah, we're very, very, very careful. I'm the only one who usually handles this stuff. I take care of it, so. Don't okay, splash so any of this bread no, with that lye, because I, I, I want to taste this bread. I will not. So basically, we'll do this do over it in the, the sink. sink. So we'll put them in. Let them sit a couple of seconds. Get it on there nicely. But most I, I, places I, just use water. They use baking soda, but then they, they bring it up to a boil. With water. The, yeah, because right. the baking soil also will raise the pH, but the flavor is not okay. the same. This actually tastes like the pretzel you grew up with. You know, my, my father, when he went when he goes to Europe, he went to went to Germany. Right. And he wanted to buy the same stuff they use over there. He went into the pretzel place. They showed him how to make them, how much you got to use. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Take the gloves off now. Now we'll get the pretzel salt. Okay. That I'll touch. Now the pretzel salt is coarser, right? Yes. It's a, uh, it almost looks like a uh, crystal sugar. Right. Whoa. Wow. Too much? Oh yeah. Right. You want hypertension? <laughs> I have that already. <laughs> I don't need no more of it. Okay, so. These are ready to go. Okay. I've had them preheating the oven to 400. So how long would you bake these for? Uh, 10 to 12 minutes. 10 to 12 minutes, okay. Yeah, that's it. So now the next bread you're gonna make is the olive bread, right? It's the olive bread, Okay, yes. so we're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. Don't go away, the next uh, bread is olive bread. I hear it's out of this world. Welcome back to Breaking Bread and I have with us here Jason Lalima from Madonia Bakery up in the Bronx. 
and welcome back to our low carb episode. <laughs> <laughs> so with the last bread you're gonna make is an olive. This is one of yes. your best sellers up there? Yes, this is one of our top sellers. People okay. just, the holidays are pretty crazy okay. for it. They just love it. So what are you gonna do here? All right, so this is basically a piece of dough we had scaled okay. already. And now we'll take it and we need to, after we scale it and roll it and let it sit for scale a while. Scale it mean you, you yeah, weigh it. Yeah, uh, weigh it. So that everyone, and, right. everyone tastes And we did, do them at a pound, three ounces okay. each. So we let, let it sit in the cabinet until it gets easy to work and we could stretch it out. Right. And then we'll put it back in the cabinet. Okay. Now I, I had made a two, few that I had stretched out. Right. Which one for you? So you're actually proofing it like twice. Right. Okay. Right. And then. It's a double proof. Right. And then it'll go back. You used to work for the FBI? Like, <laughs> <laughs> So, and okay. now we got this. You want open. to stretch it or? Just, just enough so we're gonna roll it now. Oh, okay. So we're gonna take, here's our nice oil cured Moroccan olives. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we're known for having a lot of olives in the bread. Okay. So we put a handful, right. a big handful. Why don't you put a hand, so you're, cause you're, your hand is bigger than my hand. So we'll do. That nicely. They smell good though. I, oh, wish, I, good, I, I wish I liked them. So now what we're gonna do is we use the, the cinnamon bun technique on this. Yes. So you you don't want the olives being stuck in the middle. You want them to be right. rolled into it. So right. very slowly we'll come over and then we'll just right. until we could spin it. Right. Like that. And then you don't want too many at the end because you don't want them to right. melt out. So then we'll take this and we'll just make sure everything is all seamed in. Good, and we'll make it sit for a minute. And then we'll do another one. You put the seam on the bottom? Yes. Well, we're gonna, tw we're gonna twist it. We just want like the dough oh, okay. to like, have a second to relax into it. Relax. Oh, I love because that word. Because as we, yeah. yes. Me too. We don't get enough but, of it. <laughs> no. Because if we try and stretch it out more and make a braid now, chances are we will rip it. So okay. we want to try and keep those olives in there. And I used to argue with my father all the time about doing it like that. And then one day I'm sitting there and I'm doing it. I'm like, you know, he's right. Should always listen. <laughs> <laughs> Always listen to mom and papa. Yep, exactly. Don't be cheap with the olives, you know. Man. Can't be cheap with the How olives. How much you charge for this loaf? You know, seven dollars. <laughs> seven dollars, that's not bad. No. Not at all. You know, some people complain we got too many olives. Uh, some people complain we got not enough olives. So I can't make everybody. One <laughs> thing I've learned, you can never please everyone. Nope. Do your best, that's all you can do. But <laughs> All right, now that was the easy part. Okay. Now what? All right. Well, being that you stretched this out so long already, yeah, we'll yeah. use that one first. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to come here. Then we're going to push this through there. Which one? Where'd you push? You're going to come through. This is going to come oh, through here. Oh, this comes through here, okay. Okay. And okay. then you're going to twist this. Which one? You're here, right here, right now? Yeah. Okay, now you're gonna twist this, and you're gonna stick this through the top, and you're gonna have a braid. My seam is opening up. You have any That's uh, all right. thread? That'll work. <laughs> uh, turn it over, oh, that side is better. <laughs> all right, hey. Now that looks I, like that. I, I, no, you have an extra twist there, let me put it like that. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> you missed your tail oh, number one. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, well, that'll you, work. Will you put a little egg wash in there or what? Oh yeah, we're gonna egg wash them, sure. Okay, okay, so now the other one. We'll try this again. Ready? All right, let's try this again. Give yourself a little more. I, I usually get it by the third time, but once okay, I so learn. Okay, so right here. Okay. Through. No, don't twist yet. Through Push first. This, yeah, uh, then, through. Okay. 
okay? And then twist it towards it and push it through. Okay, well, it's a new version. <laughs> yes. If you turn it over, there you go. <laughs> you got it. Hey, that, that actually might, might look good after it's oh, yeah, right? and egg washed. Yeah. That might get definition I've never seen out of <laughs> So. Okay, I think our pretzels are ready. Oh, I hear okay. the beeping. But before we taste them, let's taste some of this bread here. Which one should I taste first? I'm gonna go with my favorite. What's your favorite? Oh, here you go. The jalapeno. A little spicy. And I like the end. The end was always oh, crusty. Crusty because all the cheese is pouring out because we put chunks of cheese in it like that. We don't. Delicious. What kind of cheese? Uh, cheddar. Cheddar. Vermont cheddar. Jalapenos, onions, cornmeal. Mm. And buttermilk in there. I want to try this. Uh, Chocolate chip. Mmm, it's good. Mm. Okay, that is delicious. You make French toast with that and ice cream. Ice cream, yeah, uh, ice cream, yeah. Is it ice instead of waffles and no, ice cream? I, I, I want to try the white chocolate. People actually love that one a lot. I'm not big on white chocolate, but. Who am I to say? Sweet? Yeah. I mean, we put into a gallon of this bread, I put about 11 Much. pounds of chocolate. So as it's beating up in the mixer, because I don't like it to be big wafers. I think it should be broken up so you can see it. Don't, it goes through the whole thing, so where it melts. Actually, the white chocolate is sweeter than the dark chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That you don't see the white chocolate as much, but you taste it. This is, a, this is excellent. Now, the lard bread. That we have to try the lard bread. And you can see how flaky that is from all the fat being in there. Yeah, look at that. Crispy. Mm. The lard, you can actually taste the lard pieces. Yeah. And they're crunchy. Very good. We render that down for like two and a half, three hours. So nice. Now what about this here is a you said there's sauce. Now that's something new. That's mozzarella. This is my my stuffed pretzels that I started doing with uh super sada mm -hmm. and mozzarella in it. It's almost like the uh, stromboli. Stromboli, yeah. You know that I try to it. give a different take on the stromboli. You know, something you use the that... pretzel bread. Yeah. With the lye. Yeah. Exactly, and you know what? People, you know, grab it as a quick lunch thing. It's definitely different than the stromboli yeah. because this has, you're tasting all the meat and the pretzel is just on the outside. It's the second Whereas right. in the stromboli, it's all bread. Right. And the ingredients, whatever they put into it, is secondary. Right. This is excellent. Yeah, I tried, I wanted something totally, I wanted something no one else has done, so. Excellent. I mean, I can't eat all this. I'm gonna have to go on a diet. <laughs> yeah, um, did you try the brujoup bread yet? That's actually really good. You gotta try everything. Now this is a little. What? Has a little tang to it. You sure it's not the lye? No, it's not the lye. The lye was no. cooked? Yeah. You oh, sure yeah. you cooked it yes. enough? Yes, I cooked My it. My throat is burning. That's because there's hot super solder in there. No, it's not the lie. No, you it's sure? not the lie. Positive. All right, all right, all right. make sure. You know, I don't want this to be no. my last e last episode. No. Please. No, <laughs> no there's. Uh, I actually, the butcher next door to me makes his super sada fresh. Really? So I get it from him, and they make it very spicy. So I put spicy, and I put the sweet in, because I had it with the, the hot one, and people were saying the same thing. It's too hot. He puts a lot of pepper, a lot of. Mr. Bread is excellent, also. You really taste that bijou. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the name of this uh, butcher? B and Cardi's. He's right next door to me. I yeah, famous. A lot of people still go up there for their sausage and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, especially around the holidays, right? Yep. Now I know you said that you do cookies as well. Yes. What about what other bakeries up there? You know, pastries and. Uh, we have Maroni Bakery, which is across the street from us. He does all pastries. Right. And cookies. And then on 187th Street, you got a couple other places. Okay. We do uh, Delillos and 
Bakers Wonderful. like that. Now those pretzels, you think they're done? I, I think so. Okay, we'll take them out. So here we have our pretzels. Yes. Hot out of the oven. Nothing like a hot pretzel. I guess no. the only thing better than a hot pretzel is a hot bagel. Hot bagel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hot. So to ensure it was ready, we made sure that the temperature was at 200 degrees. Yeah, now how long did you cook that? It was... Uh, that was about 13 minutes. Yeah. Very good. I feel like putting... Mustard? Some butter or mu mustard. <laughs> mustard. <laughs> Delicious. And it's also great, sometimes we make them like this, where you don't have a hole in them, and we Use them as sandwiches, make a tuna fish sandwich on it, it's outrageous. Yeah. This is so, great. I hope uh, people would be able to come up there and you know that they've seen what you produce and what you sell up there. Yeah. And maybe uh, let me know if uh, business picks up. Hopefully it'll be but, there another hundred years. Yes. <laughs> you started in 1918, 1918. I 1918. The one thing that we all have in common, no matter what nationality, what cuisine, is bread. Is bread, yes. Bread brings people together. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of time, you know, we come together on a Sunday to break bread in our, in our liturgy, and it really is a, um, something that, it's a staple of life, but it's also a time for us to come together as family and friends to share our lives, share our stories, and mm -hmm. learn about each other and support each other. And the bread that we share helps us to do that. And that's why we named this show Breaking Bread because it brings family, friends, and faith, Everybody and food together. all together. Yes. And that's what it does. And we thank you for what you do. Oh, and because you help, you know, pleasure. you help families come together and eat a nice piece of bread with their... I love to see people happy. That's great. When they're, when they're eating, yeah. enjoying, I love, I love that. There's, There's nothing, nothing more satisfying right. than that. And bread is just, it's a simple food, but it, it's probably the most nutritious and also probably the, the best food that brings people together. Yes. So thank you. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm Monsignor Jamie, and since Jason came to visit me in my kitchen in Brooklyn, I've come up here to Arthur Avenue to visit him at Madonia Bakery. Actually, Arthur Avenue has been around for almost 100 years. It's been an institution here in New York City, and it's actually one of those neighborhoods that's still growing. And today, we're gonna go into his bakery where people come back from all over the city to come and get his bread and his cookies. Let's go inside and visit Jason. Jason, hey, I finally Monsignor, made it up to Arthur you? Avenue. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You know, this is incredible. You know, this, I think this is the closest thing to heaven for an Italian <laughs> who loves bread <laughs> and has a sweet tooth. Yes. I mean, this is amazing. How yes. long have you been here? Uh, I've been here up 25 years. The bakery itself has been around for 100 years. Right. So, wow, it's a long time. Yeah, a long time. 100 we years. We just uh, celebrated 100 years, uh, 2018. That's amazing. So, yeah. so now, I mean, this is a weekday, and I mean, people are just coming in and yeah. out. I saw yes. it outside, and it's amazing. They come from all over the place. Yes. Oh, yeah. Not they just come from, from upstate. Yeah, upstate. They come from Long Island, Connecticut, because from what I hear, they can't get a good product. Right, right, so right. they come back to what they know. They all grew up here, okay. and this is their last Italian stronghold, Little Italy. Now, before we go into the kitchen, I want to yeah. see where all this wonderful stuff is made. Maybe you can take us on a little tour of, you know, some of the items that you have here that... Sure. Um, what, what are your most popular ones? Okay. So, so here we have a cranberry walnut bread, which right. is very popular. Okay. A fennel raisin bread also. All right. Is now, I tasted when you came to my kitchen, your, your chocolate bread. The white chocolate. The white chocolate. Yes. That was unbelievable. I have that coming out of the back very oh, shortly. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. So what else do you have here? Uh, Cookies. Cookies, a lot of different cookies. Morning, we make some breakfast items, make some quiches okay. in the morning, some croissants. All right, uh, of course, crumb cake is always uh, popular. Excellent, yeah. We have different types of toast for hors d'oeuvres, for and parties the and stuff. And the tarali, yes. the the hard biscuits, yes. you know, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what do Very you have popular. over here? Uh, Walnut Delights is a... Uh, a big popular seller, uh, Chinese cookies, chocolate swirls. Okay, the lemon drops. Lemon Those drops, my yes. Everything's Very my popular. favorite. <laughs> you can tell, right? <laughs> and the seeded cookies. The old-fashioned Regina cookies. That's what they call Regina. We call yes. them the seeded cookies, right? The yes, S Regina's with the lemon in it. Oh, and these then, have lemon in them. That one oh, has okay. lemon, that one's plain. And then we have our Sophia sprinkles, which okay. is a, uh, a, a biscotti. 
right? Except it's uh, just made into a different shape. Okay. So I see you have the cannoli cookies over here? Yes. Okay. We do cannoli cookies, we make a fig cookie, which is almost Figs, like a right? fig Newton, right. but with an Italian twist on okay. it. <laughs> All right. And then our butter cookies, rugula, bow ties. How much butter do you go through in a week? Uh, <laughs> I'd say 100 pounds. Wow, 100 pounds of butter. Yeah. Now here's all your biscotti, yeah? Yes. Oh, wow. Chocolate, it's a wall of biscotti. Almonds, everything, right? All different types, yeah. Cannoli uh, shells, so you sell the cannoli shells and the fresh cannoli yeah, well, cream. Yeah, we sell the cream with the shells. Okay. But also, people love to come in because we pipe it for them fresh. You know, well, I mean, walking around off the Avenue, I mean, you, there's some of these places have been here like over 100 years. And yes. Like, people come back from all over because yeah. the neighborhood has changed. A lot of the Italians have moved away. Oh, yeah. Right? But they come back. They come back. Especially for the holidays, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the holidays, you can't right. even get down the block. And then they always pay a visit at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, right? Yes. What are some yes. of the old traditional places, you know, the institutions that have been here? Uh, Cosenza's Fish Market. Okay. Has a very old school fish market. So I'm sure yeah. around Christmas Eve, yes. there's a line around the corner. Yeah. Very busy. <laughs> uh, around the corner, we have Casa della Mozzarella. The which, warm mozzarella, yeah, right? Yeah, he's, he's making it and people are buying it. Yeah. As he's, he can't make it quick uh, enough. There's so nothing like a line. warm mozzarella right. when it's freshly made, the cream just pouring oh, out. Oh. It's outrageous. Oh. You can't just eat one. No, I know. <laughs> and the salt on top. Oh. Uh, and a piece of bread. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You just can't. Uh, got Tidal Brothers, which is like an artisan like uh, item store for olive oil. The imported different stuff. Tomato, yeah, all the imported tomato Cheeses sauces. Cheeses and everything. Cheeses, right. Uh, what about raviolis and pasta? We have a place, Borgatti's Ravioli, which makes all pastas fresh. Right. And you buy it. They actually cut the noodles right. to to order. So right. you want it one inch thick, two inch, you know, in right. all different papadelle. Yeah. However you want it, they do it for you to order. What about restaurants to come and eat and have a dinner? Because uh, not everyone cooks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Dominic's, which is a family style establishment. Okay. Excellent food in there. Right. You have Enzo's. I've eaten at Enzo's. I've eaten at Yes, yes. Excellent food. And what's the other place right on the corner? It's on the right off of Arthur Avenue. Roberto's. 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 Well, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so this is great. So let's go into the kitchen to see how some of this stuff is made. Okay, great. So here we are in the kitchen of Madonia Bakery with Jason. And now some of this equipment here, I mean, this must be older than me. Maybe even older than you. <laughs> what is this this machine? This is actually a flour silo. It's gotta be about 70 years old. Okay. <laughs> this thing. I think it's older than both of us yeah, together. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, what happens, we get the flour downstairs, you know, so it stays uh, not too warm. So all the flowers and it, it yeah. shoots up? It shoots up, yes. It actually comes up through this pipe and then and then it weighs it out. Yes. So you, you don't have to set the set the weight on here, and that's what'll come out, and then we'll put it. And wow. we have the water meter, which will set the amount of water that we. So need. you don't have to bring up the bags of flour right. and all that stuff. And then it goes into here, and this is a mix, a big. This mixer. is the big mixer, yes. Okay, it looks this like a washing machine. This is for the main production. Yeah. <laughs> this is for the main production in the morning. The the white bread doughs. Okay. The, the casa and everything like that. Now, what is this machine right here? This is a dough divider, which uh, basically keeps all, all, instead of scaling by hand and you're off, right. this will make everything precisely the same weight. So you throw all the dough in, you yes. press it, and it divides and it up divides the weight. And it divides it, right. And then we put it on the boards, right. let it sit another 15, 20 minutes, okay. and then we roll it. And this thing here? This, this is, is a rounder. This is what we make rolls with. It, uh, oh, you don't do it by hand? Well, <laughs> we do the big ones by hand, right, but this one does like the little the party rolls. Yeah, yeah. you're doing so, thousands of them, right? Yes, I mean, yes. Yeah. So when we're doing a lot of the party rolls, that's what we do. And right. you know, now we're gonna have one place that's gonna want all like cranberry and everything done okay. like that. So. And I smell something over here. This is a. Uh, this is our pound cake. Pound cake. Wow. Not too hot. Wow. Look at that pound cake. That's great. Now, is it true that a pound cake is made with a pound of flour, a pound of butter, a pound of eggs, and a pound of liquid? Yes. All right, that's mm -hmm. why they call it a pound yeah, cake. Yeah, pound cake, right. Okay. right. Everything's done by pounds. Now, over here, what is this machine here? Uh, this is a molder. Okay. So basically, you would throw your dough in, in right. the top, 
it would roll through and depending on how you want it, like for the olive bread we use it to flatten it right. out so we can hold the olives into it. Okay. Or you could put the chain down and this will roll loaves of bread, heroes. Okay. And then you just roll it, put it on the board. Now what about the cookies? There's thousands of cookies out there. I mean, where's yes. the cookie machine? There is no cookie machine. I'm the cookie machine. He's the cookie machine. <laughs> He's the cookie you machine. All with by everything hand? by hand. Oh my, during the holidays, how many cookies do you make? Uh, Thousands. A lot. a lot, yeah. Oh my, a and lot. they're all done by hand? You Everything's pipe them done out? by hand, yeah. Maybe that's why they taste so good. <laughs> well, there's a lot of love put into it. All right, now one of the most important things has to be the oven. Yes. Now let me see your oven. That must be incredible, <laughs> right? <laughs> so now this here is the oven. Now how many, uh, well, one, two, three, four, four different racks? And four different shelves, yeah. Shelves. All okay. pretty much the same temperature or variance of maybe five to ten degrees. Now this doesn't degree. rotate. No, no, it's, it's not just rotating. a flat deck oven. Okay. That's why we have the loader. It pushes everything into the back. So that pushes in like a conveyor belt yes. pushes it right all pushes the bread. Pushes in and then it drops it. And okay. Pull it back. And you make everything: the cookies, the bread, everything. All the bread in here. Some cookies in here, but right. this oven is a little bit too hot. Okay. We have the other oven over here we use for the cookies, the okay. rack oven. And this is like a convection oven. I could drop down to 350 degrees right. to cook the bichotes. So it now the bread, sense. you want a hotter temperature so that it gets crispy? Yes, so we get a nice crust on it. It bakes uh, a little faster. What's these little darker. knobs here? Those are to shut the doors. Oh, okay. When the doors are working, <laughs> shut. Oh, wow. How many loaves of bread can you cook at one time? The large round bread, you can fit 160 in at a time. French bread, you can fit about 240 in. And wow. we got bread coming out right now, as a matter of fact. Now, what is that? A nice seven grain round seven bread. Seven grain, wow. This has seed, no seeds, huh? That looks good. There's nothing yeah. like hot bread. Oh, yeah. And you put a little butter on it butter and on. it just melts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Wow. Well, this is unbelievable. This is, and of course, all the machines, but there's nothing like the human hand, the human touch. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, making yeah. bread. That's what it's all about. Well, the, yeah. The love that goes into it and my the father experience. and my grandfather wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> now, how many people do you have working on a normal day? Uh, well, we have uh, three guys on the night shift. Okay. Because we have a route so, that goes on in the morning. Around right? the clock. Right. And then in the daytime, it's us four back yeah. here, and then the girls in the store. Now, what about Christmas time or Easter, the holidays? We try and recruit a couple of people to right. come in and help us. And then you're around, <laughs> everyone's around the yeah, club, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm on the oven from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. Wow. Whatever, yeah. Wow. So, well, this is truly a working kitchen. Now, the best part is tasting. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's go and let's taste some of my favorites. Okay. Okay. Sure. So here we are, now is the taste test for the cookies. Okay. Now, you know, I'm an expert on cookies. So Thank now, you. I see you have an S cookie. Right, that's uh, like the twisted biscotti that you saw the so bacon in the back. So it's like a biscotti, a little dry cookie, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the um, filled... Um, butter cookies. Butter cookie, the sandwich cookie with some... Uh, raspberry sprinkles, jelly raspberry and, and chocolate. And of course, the tricolor cookies. Yes. Now, you say you don't use almond paste. Again. No, because so many nut allergies and kids actually okay. love these. I know when I was a kid, that's yeah. the first cookie I went for. Oh, you put the jam in there? Yeah, we, yeah. we have the jam in there. We okay. put apricot and uh, strawberry in there. Okay, and then you have here the fig cookie. Fig cookie. And then and you have then the biscotti. That's a chocolate pistachio. chip pistachio. Chocolate chip and pistachio. Yes. So, okay. Now, I have to go for my favorite, the tricolor cookie. <laughs> Okay, it's good. You don't even notice that there's no mazapan in there. No. No. That's really good. And it, it makes it makes it easier for, like I said, what all the allergies. And I like the apricot and the raspberry. Strawberry. 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 Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now your S cookie. These are good to have co with coffee. Nice coffee. Or tea. Dunk in the morning, right. like my grandmother used to do. <laughs> you know, and they're not too crunchy. They're they're soft inside. Yes. Crispy on the outside. Right. We bake them at a high temperature very quick. Mm. 410 degrees, 10 now minutes. Now the fig cookies. I love figs. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, people love that. Mm. That's very popular. That These are traditional Italian cookies. Yes. Almost any, any Italian that immigrated here, they bring this fig cookie recipe with them. A fig cookie yeah. recipe, right. And of course the um, sandwich cookies, these are so popular all over. Yes. You get these even in the uh, American bakeries all over, and uh, but these are good. 
This is a recipe from when my father was a little kid, where he learned. And what's good about the butter cookies, you can store them for weeks. You oh, put yeah. them in a container, mm -hmm. you know, seal tight, airtight, and then of course the bush coffee. Now this is probably the best to go with coffee, I think. Oh yeah. You dump them right in. Yeah. Excellent. Great with anything. Crumble it up, put it on I top of the ice cream sundae. But if you have nut, nut allergies, you can't have these. No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know what? We have a lot of nuts and a lot of things. So. <laughs> a lot of nuts walking yeah, around like, the streets <laughs> these days too, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is great, but uh, I know I'm taking a doggy bag home. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to be back, especially oh, around the holidays. Now, you know, I really don't make it up to Arthur Avenue that much, but... After coming here, I have to say I'm going to make it up here a little bit more often. Oh, that's great. Why don't we end with a little prayer, okay? okay? Yep. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you give to us, especially the, the blessings of traditions that come to us from our parents and grandparents. As we remember them and, and cook some of these wonderful recipes and pass on these traditions to our children, we remember them in a very special way. We ask you, Lord, to bless Jason and all those who work here, that they continue to bless us with such wonderful bread and wonderful food so that we can enjoy your kingdom here on earth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jason, may we break bread together again very <laughs> shortly. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breaking Bread as much as I did and my stomach did. But from Arthur Avenue, this is Monsignor Jamie. See you next time on Breaking Bread. say a little prayer, okay? Yes. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we come together today in this wonderful bakery, Madonia Bakery in Arthur Avenue, with Jason. We ask you, Lord, to bless all the work that he does and all the people here. And when people come in and taste your bread, may we all be reminded of the body of Christ who gave us his body as food for our souls. And we ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.